Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps today. Come on, what are we talking about? Three, two, one, revenge! <laughs> I've had so many of you saying now that you guys are saying it at home, and that makes my heart so happy. I love having you here, and uh, you guys are my people. I'm excited to have our book club meeting. So for those reading along with me, I'm finishing up chapter 29, and we're covering all of chapter 30 in this one, and boy, is it interesting. Not looking so good for Hank and Skang. Things are not going well. So before we dive into this, and believe me, we are going to dive face first into this. I'm excited. I do want to tell you about Patreon. Now, before you're like, oh, Jen, we've heard. Let me tell you why I'm talking about it. Okay. Five bucks a month, access to my whole catalog. It's like, I already forgot, like 81 videos, something like that of Sex in the City and I think we did some Always Sunny. We do all kinds of stuff over there. But here's the fun part. I've been deep diving on, let's see, we've done Hank and Skank. Let's see, um, Harold and Schmeg. We've, <laughs> I've been deep diving. Oh my God, Jay and I are cracking up. I've had so many funny comments over there. Guys, it's our first listening walkthrough of Archetypes. And holy crap, it is worse than you thought. It is the most patronizing, self-aggrandizing, all the isings. No, uh, does it hurt your back to kiss your own A kind of situation, right? They are, it's so ridiculous. Harry even makes an appearance. It's so crazy. I wish I could play you a clip, but Jay and I are laughing so hard and cussing throughout. I can't play it here. Check it out on Patreon because it's wild. You guys, she tells that damn soap story again. And I'm thinking, what must your life be like? How shallow are you if you rely on a third grade story still that's been disproven, but a third grade story again as your interesting anecdote? She's so annoying and it's hilarious and we're having a good time. So do check it out. Patreon.com backslash Real Housewives Recaps. I've had a couple of people say, how do I get there? I'll put the link in the comments so that way you can just click right on the link. It'll take you over. Check that out. I do have executive producers to thank. I will be saying your names at the end of the video, but for now, a huge thank you to my executive producers. And you can become an executive producer over at Patreon. Okay, revenge. So he goes into the christening of Archie and there's really not much juice there. So we're going to kind of breeze over it because you know I like to stick to the interesting stuff. But there is one thing of note. Apparently, Maggie Poo banned the palace photographer. So again, last episode, I go deep into this. If you didn't hear my last episode, you need to go watch it because it's going to piss you right off like it did me about how she favored CBS over the family because, you know, they hate the press, right? Make it make sense. <laughs> so she banned the palace photographer from the christening, I guess, so she could sell her own photographs. Nice, huh? She kept the godparents secret and again that's not typically done with the royals this is about the time where she put out that awful statement quote the same people who have been abusing me want me to serve my child up on a silver platter bitch what are you even talking about the media picked up on megan being demanding they started reporting her petulance and again tantrums ensued the tabloids that she was hungrily seeking attention from she now made them her enemy again it's just whatever suits them at the time no rules apply to harry and megan and we will get more into that because we got stuff like that coming up that you know I don't even know that you'll be surprised about, but just more interesting things on that. He does go into her quote unquote friends. And I say that because, well, she's ditched most of them by now. But the way Tom Bauer explains it, they just use each other. That's how it works, right? They capitalize on each other. Jessica Maroney was using this situation to try to land a spot. She ended up landing a spot on TV for a little while because of it. I guess using the publicity that Misha, what's her, whatever her last name, who cares? She used this time to make a pop-up shop in London. She was capitalizing on her presence in London. Abigail Spencer, I remember her. She was annoying as shit on the, <laughs> was it the Netflix documentary? Who cares? She was also on Suits. She bragged about increasing her Instagram followers from 100,000 to 500,000. If you told me I had to hang out with Megan in order to have a boost like that, it's not worth it. It's not. It's really not. <laughs> Samantha Cohen about this time was leaving, so they started to bring in somebody else. It did not go well. He, again, I'm just breezing over some of the stuff because honestly, this part was a little bit slow for me. Ooh, let's get into the interesting part. Okay, 
So Dumb and Dumber, Harold and Schmig, Hank and Skank, whatever you lovingly call them. I've had so many, you guys write so many funny things in the comments. Thank you for that. But uh, Harold and Fraud, which I also love. Okay, these two, they decide, you know what? Let's make a Sussex foundation. Okay, that's good in theory. You know, charity's good, philanthropy's good. Great, let's do that. Okay, except for Schmeggy Poo. <laughs> through a fit again i'm not even like speaking in hyperbole tom bauer actually describes it like throwing a fit but <laughs> she threw a fit because she'd have to be transparent let that sink in she was mad because she had to be transparent with a charitable foundation that she was trying to set up she thought she could do whatever she want and not have to report to anybody there seems to be a theme there as well right i want all the benefits i want none of the responsibilities sounds like harold and fraud to a t right megan was deemed a quote master of control she was not liking the legal requirements she hired i believe it was four business people to come in and help with this foundation. She thought that they would just be yes people. So she was actually surprised when they didn't do exactly what she wanted and tried to tell her, you can't just do what you want with these foundations. You have to be transparent. You have to show what money's come in, where it's gone, you know, as you do with a charity. <laughs> so what they do flash forward to now where they're in what Delaware and only have to give 5%. That's a whole other thing. Look into Archwell. Okay. Harry was pissy at this point because he was not liking William's treatment versus his own. I would say it wouldn't just be at that point. He seemed to, that seems to be a common theme with Harry. I mean, the whole book Spare was basically that. Somebody had done a word count in Spare and Willie, which is what he called William to demean him. That was the most used word in the book. So he talked about Willie more than he talked about his wife. He only mentioned Lilibet once, but he sure mentioned his Todger a lot. Ugh. Whew, I'm shivering. Yikes. <laughs> Megan later on admits that she and Harry were speaking about leaving England. Is anybody surprised by this? I'm not. Okay, let's keep moving. Harry's version of this is that it was Megan's, you know what I'm talking about, dark thoughts that spurred this. And he went on to Oprah and said, how dark does this have to get before we can get out of here? I don't know, you idiot. Didn't you brag about having a personal therapist, but you couldn't get that for your wife, huh? It's somebody else's fault because some unnamed person at the palace didn't help you in the way you thought that they would. This is, again, all according to them. And I don't believe anything that they say. <sighs> Take a deep breath, Jen. Okay, here we go. Megan told her California team to start looking for acting roles for her. <laughs> That's me cracking up at that prospect. How's that working out for you, Maggie? How's the acting going? I almost wish she would take on a role so we could all sit back and laugh and enjoy it together, right? I'll bring the popcorn. So it was around July they went to see The Lion King. Now, I wish Tom Bauer had gotten into it. He did not. So I'm going to get into it. This is the Lion King premiere in London that supposedly the actor from South Africa came up to Megan and said, when you married into the royal family, we danced in the streets like we did for Mandela. Okay. It's since been proven without a shadow of a doubt that did not happen. <laughs> the only South African actor in the company said, I did not say that. I think he even denies meeting Megan, but... Anyway, how crazy is that? It's just another easily provable lie, but yeah, she makes this shit up. This comes out in Oprah later, so uh, maybe we'll get to it when we get to the Oprah stuff, but he doesn't talk about it here, but this is supposedly where that happened. But also, can we talk for about 14 hours about this dress? I hate this dress. And I know what you're thinking. Oh, you just don't like Meghan Markle. Well, that is true. But <laughs> I was just trying to look at this dress and say, what is happening here? And I was trying to figure out what it is. It's just not tailored right. And I'm not even, I'm not even commenting on her body or anything like that. It's just the stress is terrible. It doesn't fit right and it doesn't flatter anybody. I don't think it's a good length and I don't, I just, I hate it, <laughs> which sucks because it's hard to fuck up a black dress, right? But they did it. Congratulations. Puckering around the top that I find odd, but also I'm noticing Harry's pants. What's up, High Waters? What's going on with these two? Of course, like everything else she says, people did interviews with the one South African actor, and he said, no, 
No, didn't say that. That never happened. <laughs> so again, who's got more motivation to lie here? Hmm. Me thinks it's Miggy Poo for some reason. So Bauer does talk about it. The same show they were seen. It appears like they were hobnobbing, but actually they were pitching Megan for... <laughs> I can't get through this without laughing. They were pitching Megan for roles. They approached Bob Iger, you know, Disney guy. We're pitching Megan for voiceover work. They ended up... It did pay off because she ended up narrating... I believe it's called Elephants Without Borders. And supposedly the reviews are abysmal. But I'm sure people have gotten in and given fake reviews. But yeah, she's supposed to be really horrible in that. Maybe I'll check that out at some point too. Because yeah, it sounds like a mess. All right. So not enthusiastic reviews there. Next up, we head to Wimbledon. And she wanted to see her good pal, Serena. And P.S. That's what I go. That's the listen the episode I listened to in Patreon where she talks to Serena and I'm not even kidding. The first 20 minutes of it are her talking about herself and her damn hand soap again. There's no Serena. We kept waiting and waiting. I say we because my husband recorded it with me, but we kept waiting and waiting for Serena to come out and talk. I was more interested to hear what she had to say, but nah, Megan made it all about herself as she does about everything. This is where she threw a fit again. See a theme here where somebody was taking pictures of her. Imagine that. I thought she loved that, right? But she said she was in a private capacity. Well, no, you're not. (laughs) You're royal. You're in the royal press box or whatever it's called, the royal box. You're in the fancy place, right? (laughs) You're not sitting amongst the commoners. You are in the royal box. And then you're mad that people are taking pictures of you. I mean... (sighs) Just the lack of self-awareness. Again, isn't she supposed to have studied international relations? She's really bad at it, if that's the case. Here's a very elegant looking Megan with her tongue out again. Because sure, why not? That seems to be a thing she likes to do in photos. I don't know if she thinks it's like cute or sweet or what, but no. It's no. Okay, so... You guys can fill me in on this part because I tried to look and I found a couple of stories, but a lot of you have let me know in the comments. This is also the event, I believe, where she made people move that had bought tickets because she didn't want them too close to her. And more than just like her security stuff, I mean, like a couple rows in front of her, she wanted them moved for whatever reason. But also, um, this was where the lady, there was at least one person trying to take photos of Serena Williams. And Megan accused her of trying to take photos of of Megan. And the lady came out and said, no, I didn't even know who you were or care. I was trying to take photos of Serena. So I kind of love that story. Megan was so busy trying to convince us that she was a hardworking royal. But meanwhile, she only did one engagement. And it was for her charity that she had signed on for, that SmartWorks. And otherwise, she just went to polo matches. This was a direct quote quote from Tom Bauer. So I'm not, I'm not even trying to talk shit here. It's the truth. She went to polo matches and took holidays on private jets with Harry and Archie. P.S. So many of you guys are so good. In the comments, you all brought up the fact, and I I didn't even talk about that. Didn't she claim that the palace took her passport? That's interesting because she sure managed to go on a lot of different trips. Bauer goes into how she went to, I believe it was Sicily. She went to America to see her friend Venus Williams play. She went to uh, Ibiza, which we're going to get, Ibiza, which we're going to get into. But still, remember, the palace took her passport. So interesting that uh, she was able to do all that traveling, right? So they wanted all the pluses of royal lives, but none of the, you know, work or obligation that, that goes with it. Hmm. They were spiraling, continuing to spiral, and were an unhappy mess of pity and perceived victimhood. It continues. It's never ending with these two. They started to call upon their friends and say, hey, speak out on our behalf. Victimhood, right? It's so unfair. People are talking mean. She's being a royal bitch (laughs) to people saying, I'm private. Don't photograph me. That's my Megan voice. But yet, she's calling on her celebrity friends to try to protect her. She won't, like, talk to the people who are actually there trying to help from the royal family and the 
working on behalf of the, the royal family. Nope, she'll call her celebrity friend. So Elton John spoke out and said, you know, we got to do something. <laughs> That's a Russell Brand reference. If you don't know what I'm talking about, forgetting Sarah Marshall. I love it. We got to do something. Like, no specific action. We just got to do something. It's like Harold talking about climate change. We got to do something, guys. Okay. Jessica Maroney was posting, guys, stop it. This is when she and Jessica were still friends before Jessica got ghosted. Oh, I could take about 14 hours to tell you how much I dislike Jamila Jamil. That lady sucks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to gump, jump on your Google machine and find out about her. Now, I love The Good Place, so it actually pains me to talk about this because it's such a good show. But Jamila Jamil sucks. Um, definitely jump on the Googles and find out about her. But start with bees because that's hilarious. But apparently, how do I say this? Allegedly. I'll just say that Munchausen syndrome and... <laughs> Faking her illnesses has been associated in the press with Jamila Jamil. But that's not why I can't stand her. There's about a million reasons I can't stand her. And this gets interesting is because remember we discussed Caroline Flack. Now, unfortunately, she took herself out. She had dated Prince Harry at one point, And it all ties back into this Jamila character. And Pierce Morgan shared the DMs where Jamila was allegedly bullying... Caroline Flack and that's it's hard to explain here but you need to google it basically Jamila got a bunch of people to pester and really bother Caroline Flack and then things got real bad from there and that's why Pierce called out that it's surreal that Jamila was trying to that Jamila has been speaking out against online harassment think about that okay so that's a little side trip with why I can't stand Jamila Jamil and I think she's a terrible person. She decided to help justify why they were taking so many private jets because the media was reporting on this as well. And we'll get more into the private jet things. Don't worry. Don't you worry. I got more stuff coming. Jamila was trying to justify the private jets. Believe me, she says some dumb shit later. We'll get into that. But she's a terrible person. Okay. Harry then during this time went to speak at a Google summit in Sicily. It's all about the climate crisis, global warning, all that stuff. How did Harry get there? Private jet. <laughs> I cannot make this stuff up. Tom Bauer points out there was actually 100 plus private jets there of all the people speaking on the climate crisis, global warming, etc. In his speech, he said every choice, every action makes a difference. We got to do something. We got to do. The arrogance was increasing during Harry's preaching Harry then started to be questioned why why is it that about 60% of his flights around that time were private? He got mad. He didn't think he should be questioned. Again, this all sounds familiar. Nobody should question us. We're just going to preach, but nobody should question us. Um, he preached that it was his family's safety, so he had to. He had to tra travel on private plane, you guys. Harry believed himself and his, you know, his bride <laughs> of Frankenstein to be special and above questioning. That's because he's a spoiled brat who has no idea what's going on anywhere but his own little world. Meanwhile, during this time, the Cambridges flew commercial to their summer holiday in Aberdeen. They were going to meet up in Balmoral. Well, Megan took this as a dig on her because Megan thinks everything's about her. She threw a fit about it because how dare the Cambridges use common sense and <laughs> act normal and human. No, 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 that won't do. So Megan threw a fit and announced, no, we are not going to Valmoral this year. She literally said, Archie is too young to travel by plane to Scotland. Okay, I just want you to think about that. Because you know what they did next? They flew him to Ibiza. Seriously, what the hell? What in the hell? Oh, God. All right, chapter 30, Vogue. Let's talk about this because it gets juicy. So remember, Maggie Poo had, there was controversy whether or not she had actually edited it, but supposedly edited the September issue. If you don't know Vogue, that's a huge issue that comes out every year. It's a big deal to people who care about that sort of thing. The actual editor of Vogue had been meeting with her and Tom Bauer alluded to there being potential problem, but he didn't explain it then, but he goes into it now. 
So apparently what was happening behind the scenes is Megan started making more demands. Megan, quote, wanted to break the internet. She wanted to have her say in everything, but apparently most of her comp- contributions were completely superficial. I'm not shocked by that statement. Megs decided that she could help publicity. She's trying to help Vogue, right? Get more publicity. So she thinks she can do it better. So what does she do? She has her friends start leaking snippets to the sun. Vogue was getting pissed. They said, we don't do that. We do better when it's like a surprise and the article comes out and people talk about it. But of course, Megan thinks she knows best all the time. Must be hard to be so perfect, you guys. I hope you can read the sarcasm in my voice there. Okay, so they get into this issue of Vogue. It's supposed to be about game changers. And they have people like Diane Fossey, Jane Fonda, Joni Mitchell, Toni Morrison, blah, blah, blah. You know who else is in there? Again, guess who had a hand in this? Bonnie Hammer. And you're like, hey, Jen, who's that? Well, I'll tell you. She works for NBC. And you know what? She cast Megan Suits. Interestingly from that, missing, uh, missing from the list, the queen. Hmm. Interesting. Megan really wanted to be on the cover of Vogue. The team had to explain to her, you don't want to do that. It would appear boastful. She later spun it as her own decision to not be on the cover, try to take a back seat on this. And uh, people that worked there said, no, that's not what happened. She was pissed. So Salma Hayek ended up getting part of the cover or some. Di- I say it like that because I've seen it and there are a bunch of pictures on there. But I think Salma Hayek maybe was a focus on one of the covers. And not that it has anything to do with it. And it's a complete coincidence. I'm not shit talking Salma Hayek. I actually like her. But she's married to a French billionaire who happens to be Vogue's leading advertiser. Huh, imagine that. Weird coincidence, right? Okay, Buckingham Palace was completely, like, left out of the loop on this. So they're kind of blindsided by all this. Like, what? You did what? Again, she doesn't want to involve Buckingham Palace with any of her plans, except for when she needs their help. Then she gets them. Megan decided that she wanted American publications to have first dibs. Her plan was have it come out a day earlier in America because she thought she would be received better in America, to which I say, how's that working out for you now? You're not being received too well in America right now. She thought she'd do better in America, so she wanted that publication to hit first and then the UK version to hit the next day. Well, Vogue was like, no, it doesn't work like that. We, We launched the same day. What are you talking about? Well, she decided the palace could maybe make a demand on her behalf and it would be obeyed by Vogue. But guess what? While I don't give two shits about Vogue, I found this really funny. I believe his name is pronounced Einenful. He is the one that had worked with her on all of this. He's the editor of the British Vogue. He ignored her demands. So you can imagine how well that went. It pretty much ended their relationship. I'm sure he was doing a happy dance over that. And then when the issues actually hit, the press lambasted her. And I thought it was hilarious. They called her divisive. They said that when she's in a hole, she just keeps digging. Megan was making these demands of Vogue and its publicity department. And they were getting even more frustrated with her, which was not helping anything at all. The Daily Mail put out a thing saying, we Brits prefer true royalty over fashion royalty. Well... What did Megan do? She deemed it racist. It's interesting how when things don't go her way, that's the word she likes to throw around. Explain to me why that's racist. It's not. She's being ridiculous. That's her favorite thing to say. She was trying to spin it as promoting a happier life. But no, she's just clueless. She has no idea what she's talking about. It's all virtual si- virtue signaling. She calls her publicist demanding that celebrities endorse her during this time. They started talking to that Vogue guy, the Edenful, and he he refused. He's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I've had enough of this bitch. I'm good. I'm not endorsing her. But again, this is where Jamila Jamil comes up. She's the worst. And no wonder she and Megan are friends. They can spin stories about bees together. Jamila Jamil jumped in on on the bandwagon and said, just admit it. Just say you hate her because she's black. I'm pausing on purpose. Just let that sink in. They literally have nothing else to go on. So that's what they're pulling at. 
Nobody else is bringing it up but them. I'm surprised that she didn't say it's because she's a woman. Or it's because she's, I don't know, you know, you name it. She'll pick something to grasp onto, and that's the reason people hate her. It couldn't be her awful personality. It's because of these alleged isms that she pretends to face constantly. It must be really difficult to be her. Guys, I am leaving it there. That's the end of that chapter. We'll get into chapter 31, Attack, and the next one. And I'm excited to dive in. Thank you so much for being here. While I've got you, I do want to shout out my Patreon. I've already talked about Patreon. Check that out for sure. But um, I want to shout out my executive producers. A huge thank you to Kristen, to Linda, Melissa, Paige, Teresa, Mary, Amy, Mr. K, and K. I didn't do that on purpose. There really is a Mr. K, and then there's a K. Um, thank you so much for being here, for supporting, for being so wonderful, and being my executive producers. I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. If you want to further support the show, do check out Patreon. You can become an executive producer as well and I will give you a shout out. Thank you guys for everything. I still got the merch. Recollections may vary. Make it make sense. Hank and Skank, check it out. Thank you guys for everything. You truly are the best. You mean the whole wide world to me. Couldn't do this without you and I can't wait to get into the next part of, shall we say it together? One, two, three, revenge! (laughs) Have a good day. Bye-bye.